Hello and welcome to Career Ride. I am Nishant and once again I am here with a new topic. And my today's topic is operating system interview questions and answers in MCQ format. So without wasting time, let's get started now. All right, so let's begin with the first question. What type of kernel is Windows? And the options we have monolithic kernel, hybrid kernel, micro kernel, nano kernel. And the correct option is option B that is hybrid kernel. Yes, the kernel is an important part of OS and manages the operations of a computer and its hardware. There are many types of kernels such as micro kernel, monolithic kernel, hybrid kernel, etc. In monolithic kernel, user and kernel services are run in separate address space. And this reduces the size of kernel, which in turn reduces the size of operating system. But it also reduces the speed of execution. In monolithic kernel, both user services and kernel services are kept in the same address space. Consequently, the execution of the process will be faster in monolithic kernels. A hybrid kernel is a combination of features and benefits of both micro kernel and monolithic kernel. And the Windows kernel is a hybrid kernel. Now coming to the next question, which of the following is not true? And the options we have, kernel is at the core of the operating system. Kernel is not the first part of operating system that was loaded into memory when booting up a computer. Kernel is responsible for various tasks such as disk management, task management, and memory management. Kernel remains in the memory until this operating system is shut down. And the correct option is option B. Yes, the kernel is the first program of the operating system that was loaded into memory when booting up a computer. Now coming to the next question, which of the following serves as an interface for the user programs to access the service of an operating system? And the options we have system calls, API, modules, assembly instructions. And the correct option is option A that is system calls. Yes, the system call serves as an interface between operating system and user programs. When a user program needs to access operating system's kernel, it makes a system call. The kernel system can only be accessed using system calls. Now the next one is, a process is said to be in ready state if a process is newly created and is waiting for the CPU. A process is unable to run and wait until some task has been completed. A process is using the CPU and none of the above. And the correct answer is option A, that is a process is newly created and waiting for the CPU. Yes, a newly created process is in ready state and is waiting for the CPU in order to execute it. When a process is unable to run because it is waiting for some other task to be completed, it is said to be in a wait or block state. And when a process is using the CPU, it is said to be in running state. Coming to the next question, how many ways a process be terminated? And the options we have normal exit, fatal error, killed by another process and all of the above. And the correct option is option D that is all of the above. Yes, a process can be killed by all of the above methods. A process exits normally when it completes its task successfully. On account of fatal error while running, the process may exit abnormally. And it can also be terminated forcefully by another process. Okay, so the next one is, a virtual address generated by the CPU while a program is running is called as physical address, logical address, MAC address, none of the above. And the correct one is option B, that is logical address. Well, the physical address is the actual address of the data inside the memory. 
the user never deals with physical address directly. It uses a virtual address or logical address generated by the CPU to access physical address inside the memory. It is the memory management unit that is MMU that translates logical addresses to physical addresses that corresponds to RAM or main memory. So a logical address doesn't exist physically because it is only used for reference to access physical address. Alright, so the next one is in thrashing the CPU spends most of its time in executing, swapping, waiting, none of the above. And the correct answer is option B that is swapping. Well, thrashing is a state where CPU spends most of its time swapping pages between main memory and virtual memory rather than executing instructions. Thrashing results in performance problem in OS since CPU spends less time on actual productive work and spend more time in swapping. Now the next one is, in which of the following situations a page fault can occur? And the options we have, a page is not found in the memory, a page is not found in the virtual memory, a page is not found in the secondary memory and all of the above. But the correct option is option A, that is, a page is not found in the main memory. Well, a page fault occurs when a program accesses a page that is mapped in the virtual address space, but not loaded in physical memory. The page fault causes an exception that notifies the operating system to retrieve the pages from the secondary memory into the main memory. Alright, so coming to the next one, which of the following is not an operating system scheduling algorithm? Round robbing scheduling, first come first served scheduling, shortest remaining time, banker's algorithm. And the correct option is option D, that is banker's algorithm. Well, the banker's algorithm is a deadlock avoidance algorithm and not a scheduling algorithm. Scheduling algorithm tell the CPU which will be the next process to have CPU time based on particular scheduling algorithms. And the main objective of scheduling algorithm is to maximize the CPU utilization. And some of the widely used scheduling algorithms are first come first served scheduling, shortest job next scheduling, priority scheduling, shortest remaining time, round robin scheduling, multi-level queues scheduling. Okay, so the next one is which of the following is true? And the options we have overlays are used to increase the size of physical memory. Overlays are used to increase the size of virtual memory. Overlays are used to overcome the limitation of physical memory. None of the above. But the correct one is option C that is overlays are used to overcome the limitation of physical memory. Well overlays is a technique that allows a program to run despite it is bigger than the size of physical memory. Using this type of technique only those instructions and data are kept inside the main memory that is needed at given time. Okay, so the next one is what does virtual memory allow? And the options we have execution of process that may not be completely in the memory, a program to be smaller than the physical memory, a program to be larger than the secondary memory, execution of process without being in the physical memory. And the correct one is option A that is execution of a program that may not be completely in the memory. Well, a virtual memory is a part of secondary storage but gives the user an illusion that it is a part of main memory. It allows running big applications with low main memory and increases the degree of multiprogramming in systems. Virtual memory frees up RAM by swapping data that has not been used recently over to a storage device such as a hard drive. 
Now the next question is which memory management technique is used to retrieve process from the secondary storage into the main memory in the form of pages. And the option we have fragmentation, paging, mapping, none. And the correct one is option B that is paging. Well paging divides each process in the form of pages. These pages are brought into the main memory only when they are required. Otherwise, they reside in the secondary storage. Now coming to the next one. Which of the following is true about microkernel? And the options we have. The user services are kept in the user address space and kernel services are kept under kernel address space. The operation of microkernel is slower as compared to monolithic kernels. Microkernel doesn't require any modification in kernel space if new service is added to user address space and all of the above. And the correct one is option D that is all of the above. Yes, in microkernel the user service are kept in the user address space and kernel services are kept under kernel address space. The operation of the microkernel is slower as compared to monolithic kernels. And microkernel doesn't require any modification in kernel space if new service is added to user address space. Now coming to the next one. The part of the secondary storage used for paging is known as virtual memory, main memory, secondary storage, primary memory. And the correct one is option A that is virtual memory. In paging, a process is divided into fixed size continuous block known as pages and is stored on secondary storage. Now the next one is, which of the following is the most suitable scheduling scheme for the real-time operating system? And the options we have round robin, preemptive, random, first come first serve. And the correct one is option B that is preemptive. Yes, preemptive is the most suitable scheduling scheme for real-time operating system. A real-time system requires producing the result urgently. And preemptive scheduling allows a real-time process to preempt a process currently running in the kernel. Now coming to the next question, what is the purpose of banker's algorithm? And the options we have prevent deadlock, solving deadlock, recover from deadlock and all of the above. And the correct one is option A that is prevent deadlock. Yes, the banker's algorithm is a deadlock avoidance algorithm. It manages resource allocation. It is also called as deadlock detection algorithm. It is named as banker's algorithm because the banks use the same technique to allow money and provide loans to their customers so that they never run out of money. Now the next one is, which of the following is a situation where all the low priority processes get blocked and the high priority processes execute? And the options we have, deadlock, starvation, aging, thrashing. And the correct one is option B, that is starvation. Yes, starvation is a situation where all the low priority processes get blocked and high priority processes execute. Unlike deadlock, starvation is a long waiting but not an infinite process. Now, every starvation doesn't necessarily cause a deadlock. And starvation basically happens due to uncontrolled priority and resource management. Now coming to the next one. The address of the next instruction to be executed by the current process is provided by which of the following? And the options we have CPU registers, program counter, program stack, pipe. And the correct one is option B that is program counter. Yes, the program counter is one of the attributes of a process where it stores address of the next instruction to be executed by the process. Now coming to the next question. The circular wait condition can be prevented by using a thread, 
defining a linear ordering of the resource types using pipes and all of the above and the correct one is option b that is defining a linear ordering of resource types yes the circular weight condition can be prevented by defining a linear ordering of the resource types this means that we must number all resources and a process has to access the resource in an increasing or decreasing order now coming to the last question in this series which of the following algorithms schedules job according to their arrival time and here we have the options but the correct one is option a that is first come first serve fcfs well the fcfs is a scheduling algorithm where a process that requests the cpu first will be executed first and hence it schedules processes and request according to their arrival time